I'm David Uy, Executive Director of the Chinese American Museum, D.C. Uh, we're the first and only museum in our nation's capital dedicated to the Chinese American story. This evening, we offer our final webinar in our Taoism series. And tonight we discuss the Tao in health and well-being with three noted experts. The concept of balancing the body's energy, the qi, and achieving harmony between mind, body, and spirit is widely accepted in traditional Chinese medicine, which includes acupuncture, herbal medicine, and other therapies based on Taoist principles. In this session, we will learn how these can help guide your wellness journey and how it is becoming widely integrated in contemporary medicine. Our webinar, webinar is moderated by Dr. Don Lee, an entrepreneur, educator, and writer. She is a pr practitioner of Qigong and Tai Chi and the author of Song of a Lotus Leaf a poetry collection about her Tao journey. Uh, Dawn received a certificate in traditional Chinese medicine in Beijing and also studied at the University of Maryland's Integrative Health Department. Uh, she holds a PhD in literature from George Washington University. And uh, we are pleased to welcome Dawn Lee. Thank you, David. Welcome, everyone. I'm so delighted to be here and to introduce two experts in Taoism to you. And uh, one is uh, a Taoist priest, also a martial artist. That's Master Chan. He's uh, Abbot Yunzhen, uh, Yunxiangzhen. And the other is uh, Dr. Steve Jakowicz. He's a professor and doctor of uh, East Asian medicine and also martial artist. And so we're in for an interesting conversation. Before we start, before we delve into the details of the Taoist influences on health and medicine, I'd like to say a few words about Taoism. We've had two webinars, and uh, this is the third webinar on Taoism. And Taoism is a religion, is a philosophy, is a way of life, as uh, we have learned. How about uh, if I ask you to design a logo for Taoism? What, is, uh, what are the essential char charts or graphs that you may uh, design? Are they already there? Yes, yin yang diagram. I guess, uh, David, the first slide, please. Taoism is a cosmology. The yin yang diagram, it looks very simple. We know Taoism sounds very complicated. The yin yang diagram is very simple. We all know the yin yang opposing forces. We know the circle around it, right? Circle is the unity, and you have yin and yang, yin and yang forming harmony. And there's a line in the middle that's the like an S, and it's the line of transformation. And you see this yin yang symbol in many places when you encounter Taoism or the Tao. And uh, so on the chart, the, the chart on the right is uh, one chart representing Taoist cosmology. And you have from the, um, the Wuji or great void or nothingness separates, you separate into yin and yang and it's the Tai Chi com that combines the yin and yang forces. So how about the, the eight trigrams? The eight trigrams are the further divided components from the tai, from tai Chi. And as you can see on the chart on the right, the logo, kind of modern logo, right? It's a beautiful one. You see uh, often 
in places that mention Taoism. So that is how Taoists, ancient Taoists, capture the universe, the cosmos. The, um, in Tao Te Ching, the classic, a Taoist classic, you have this quote, Tao gives birth to one, one gives birth to two, three, the two gives birth to three, and the three gives birth to all universal being, things. All universal things shoulder or carry the yin and embrace the yang. And the yin and the yang mingle and mix with each other to beget the harmony. And those are the numbers one, two, and then the three is the circle in the middle of the, one is the unity, two is the opposing forces, yin and yang. And uh, the third is the line in the middle. And that line is the line of transformation. And uh, the eight trigrams, from the eight trigrams there are the eight components that are further divided from the, from the yin yang principle. So you can see the sky and the earth and other elements, the eight trigrams. But how do they relate to people, to human beings? If you go to the next slide, uh, David, next slide. We are all familiar with Tai Chi. So Tai Chi, here you have the uh, nothingness of Wu Ji again, with the transformative power of Tai Chi turning the undifferentiated state of Wu Ji into two opposing forces and into a unit of whole. So, and the Tai Chi, the, the middle picture shows a person moving like the Tai Chi, uh, like the like Tai Chi itself, the following the principles of the Tai Chi. And uh, Yi Jin says, man follows earth, earth follows heaven. So the three components, you have the heaven and the earth, and you have humans uh, standing between them. And so Tai Chi, the Tai Chi Chuan, it's actually a Taoism or Taoist philosophy in action. And uh, the action affects the body. We go to the source of creation, the Tao, and we work on our postnatal body, our body, and through the uh, yin yang transformation and through the, uh, the principles of, of, of Tai Chi. I think that's uh, about enough <laughs> time for Taoism. So Taoism expressed, uh, it's very intuitive in the expression, um, um, the understanding of cosmology. Okay, now uh, we'd like to ask questions of our guests. And we can start with uh, the first question is, please share with us your story, how you became interested in Taoism. How about we have Master Chen start? <laughs> Thank you for having me here. How am I getting interested in Taoism? See that we, uh, in our Chinese culture, I say, there is a blood of Taoism floating in every Chinese uh, person. So Chinese uh, uh, culture root deeply in Taoism. So we are naturally born as a Taoist. The Taoist means the nature and principle and the truth and the pathway. As long as everybody's followed the truth, the principle, the nature, we are all Taoist. So I am a natural Taoist <laughs> for that sense of speaking. From very beginning, I was being um, chosen and brought into the monastery, the training in the very young ages, follows uh, uh, multiple Taoist masters to study. And the more I follow and study in the monastery, and the more I get to, to validate what's came with my from my DNA, from my spirits about Taoism. So therefore I got more interested into it. And so over 45 years practice, I'm still uh, still trying to learn about Taoism, I guess. 
Thank yeah, you. I learned that you were trained in Wudan Mountains. Yes, I spent uh, 10 years in a monastery. Yeah, so natural Taoist, uh, that's an interesting term. Uh, would you elaborate a little bit on that? Good. Um, Tao means a principle, the truth, the universal way. In Taoism, most two significant philosophy mean Tao Fa Zi Lan, Tian Ren He Yi. The Tao follow what's nature, and man united with heaven, or man united with the Tao as one. So with that speaking, so we are all the natural Taoists because we are very natural. Our human's instant nature was kindness, mercies, and forgiveness. And the, 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 the rule between the mankind and the universe are uh, balance, harmony, and unity. So once we follow that principle, I mean, we are natural Taoists. At the birth, we, are, we came with the innocent, we came with nothingness like Wu Ji. But then when we encountered in a life, Tai Ji has happened, meaning two polarity has happened, yin and yang being, you know, being happened. We are the one that combine yin and yang. So in, in my teachers always say, you can always find the third side of the coin, uh, you know, and, and the one coin. So we are the combinations of yin and yang so I would say the unity of yin and yang is so speaking. So we are all Taoist because we are all naturally, uh, naturally Taoist, so to speak. And the Master Chan, you're the only one with the, uh, the priesthood here, the Tao, you're a Tao priest. There was a question in the second seminar asking about uh, uh, Taoist religion. So what is the difference between the Taoist religion, Taoist philosophy from your perspective? Taoist philosophy came from the early Chun uh, Qiu Zhang Guo, it's called spring and autumn time. In the very beginning came with a philosophy. Lao Tzu was the greatest philosophist, philosophers. So he brought the, the concept of the Tao, the way how the Tao, the way how the Taoist principle affecting our human's life. So in the very beginning, a human learned to follow nature, to live in harmony with nature, with heaven and earth, with our inner nature, because we are the, we are a little cosmos. So imitating the bigger cosmos, small and little cosmos united as one. So we are speaking some, the people follow this principle of living, and that's called being a Taoist philosopher. So very beginning, Taoism is the philosophy. And I get to the Eastern Han Dynasty, the master Zhang, uh, Zhang Daoling, uh, it based on, on this philosophy, make the Tao become a governing principle for a religion to follow. So that known about in 1500 years ago, Taoism became a religion to practice, but it followed the Taoist philosophy to practice so religion based on the Tao and Tao philosophy to cultivating the way of life then became a Taoism. Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, how about uh, Dr. Jakovic, if you could share your story? Well, okay, um, great question. So I'm on the medical side of the equation um, and where Master Chun said that he is a natural Taoist, perhaps I would call myself an incidental Taoist, <laughs> uh, falling into that by incident. And so from the time I was a kid, I did martial arts and the martial arts have a strong connection to different aspects of East Asian culture and philosophy and, and such. And, and uh, actually historically, the martial and military school was a complete philosophical school as to how you Support yourself and had a lot of ideas of the Tao in it. Um, but the way I kind of fell into medicine was from injury doing martial arts. So my first experience was I had my jaw broken uh, fighting and had nerve damage on one side of my face. And one side, and I couldn't move the one side correctly. And one of my um, fellow martial arts students was studying acupuncture and said, oh, you should see my acupuncture teacher. So I wound up seeing her teacher and got treated and he got all the feeling back. And I said, wow, 
this stuff actually works and was impressed by it, but wasn't smart enough to necessarily study it at that point. I finished my undergraduate degree, which was from Harvard, and I was studying East Asian studies because I was fascinated by it, and wound up living in Korea and uh, was working there and training martial arts. And I had, uh, I hurt my knee pretty severely. And my martial arts teacher was also an acupuncturist. He treated it and I had acupuncture and herbs and such and had a wondrous result. And I said, you guys should study this in case I keep getting hurt. So I wound up going to medical school in Korea and then wound up going from there deeper and deeper into medicine. And then subsequently came back to the States, did more study in medicine, kept doing martial arts, uh, went on to get a PhD uh, studying the development of East Asian medicine, went to China, went to Japan, uh, back and forth, and then wound up being um, both in practice for many years, but also working in academia. And so I actually served most recently as the chair of the doctoral program in traditional uh, Chinese medicine at the University of Bridgeport, where after almost a decade doing that, I've now retired. Um, but I've been on the academic side of it and uh, presenting papers and doing research and being able to work with the Western medical community as well as the Eastern medical community. And I, I'm on that side of it. So along the way, going deeper and deeper into the medicine, well, the Chinese often call the deeper aspects of Zhong Yi, of Chinese medicine, or as we often say, Dong Fang Yi Xue, Eastern medicine. And we often use the term East Asian medicine because China, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam all share a similar, but not identical, medical system that has similar ideas in it. Um, but those, if you go deeper into it, you wind up with what they call Yi Dao, which is the medical Dao, the path of medicine, which brings you into things of like, why are we alive? How are we alive? Not just how we function, which is one thing, because in many ways, I'm more of a mechanic perhaps than Master Chen is, because if your knee is bad, I'll figure out what tendons and what ligaments and what lines and what things and what herbs and very me mechanistically try to fix it, right? So we often call that the, you know, the, the mechanism. So the mechanism of how the body works, a mechanism of how heaven works within you. So you talked about ten heaven and ren, the, and Master Chen talked about ten ren hui, humanity and, 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 and heaven are as one. Well, we talk about ten ji, the heavenly mechanism, how it's a mechanism within you, how it operates within you. So in that sense, incidentally, by studying deeper, I came into the Taoist and came deeper into it. And so, and then met one of my, my uh, teachers, of course, uh, Professor Olivia Cohn, who introduced uh, Don Yu to me. Uh, so that's how I found you for this uh, topic. And uh, also one of my uh, Chinese teachers, I've had many teachers from studying Korea to Japan to, to, to China. One of my Chinese teachers, Zhang Yuanming, who is also a Taoist priest, and was the former head of Beijing Guangming Medical University. So I've had that side of it been exposed to those traditional ideas because although we say East Asian medicine, perhaps more accurately, it's East Asian medicines, meaning not only the national variations, but the variations of a tradition that goes back thousands of years and a variation that has both what is the very literate medicine and the folk medicine and the Taoist medicine and the Buddhist medicine and all these combined variations on it. So that's how I kind of came to it. And hopefully as tonight we talk about it, you know, I can talk both on the more kind of both mechanistic side, maybe a little bit also on the integrative side. Because now we talk about integrative medicine, the Chinese called hei, integrating the West and the East, and how the meeting ground between two radically different views of the body can come together and talk about the truth of what the body is like. As Master Chen said, the body is a natural mechanism, but viewed from different perspectives, maybe it looks different. So hopefully that's an answer to the question. Yeah, excellent. Interesting background. And uh, we know that a lot of American young people especially are so interested in martial arts. So from martial artists, from martial arts to Chinese medicine and East Asian medicine, and uh, you've gone a long way. <laughs> and then the injuries and, and uh, remedies along the way those have pointed you towards more of the value of the Taoist approaches. So for, from your life transformation, life, life journey, uh, what do you see the Tao in it? Is, is Tao guiding you? Well, great question. Because my teacher has taught us that the Tao is fractured into five parts, historically. 
that in the ancient days, as Master Chen talked about in the very, very early days in the Zhang Shaddai, in the Warring States period, back in the uh, spring and autumn period, the Tao was more complete. But then as society got more sophisticated, it separated. So you have the Tao falling into or becoming an aspect of what informs Confucianism. And that is in many ways the, the Shi Hui Tao, the social Tao. How do I be polite? How do I talk? How do I act? I mean, in the Tao Te Ching itself, it says, when the Tao was lost, then arose propriety, rules of how to act. So that's one aspect of the Tao, how to be in society. That's Confucianism. Another aspect is the Taoist religious practices, which codify how to stay in touch with nature. We live under electric lights. We, we, we wall ourselves off from the changes in temperature, right? The winter solstice, the spring equinox just passed. And we don't always mark those because we're divorced from them but our bodies respond to them. So many times Taoist ritual is to make us stay in accord with those forces. So that's Taoism as an organized structure, right? The, the specific Tao Fa or Tao Zong. Then Buddhism and Buddhism, well, Buddhism is about the mind. So it's aspects that are similar because often in Chinese they call it Fo Dao, the Tao of the Buddha, of the exceptional individual who could meditate and come to understanding and enlightenment. Then Wu Dao, the martial Tao, the way of dealing with force, right? I still do martial arts. I still teach martial arts. I still go and roll around and throw, do judo and fight with guys half my age and children and all this and teach this stuff because it teaches them how to deal with force and how not to always resist because it teaches the value of yin in, re in reception of yang. And then finally, idao, the medicine, where the medicine, looking at the body and bearing witness to the very things that made, made Shakyamuni Gautama, who was the Buddha, seek enlightenment, looking at age, looking at illness, looking at death, right? Those things are what parade across my treatment table. And in that sense, that forces the doctor to be philosopher and maybe or maybe not be religious, but at the same time, have to deal with the very Tao or the pathway, how we deal with those things how we accept them, how we can wu wei, right? Wu wei often called non-action. But as I understand, and as my teachers taught it to me, wu wei is not thinking things act the way you want them to, seeing them naturally as they go and being okay with that. So that's uh, Lu Dongbin, one of the eight immortals, wrote in his Beitza uh, Bay, his 100 character stile, you must float your heart down to do without doing. Um, yeah. That's hard for the doctor who wants to do. So in that sense, that's how the Tao guides all, or can guide all medical practitioners. Yeah, Wu Wei is uh, quite hard to understand. <laughs> when you think, oh, I don't do anything, then uh, how can I be in harmonious with uh, nature? Uh, back to Master Chen, we were talking about the Taoist, the differences between Taoist religion and Taoist philosophy. And uh, as a Taoist priest, uh, you, how do you, um, how how do you preach or how do you work with, communicate with those who come to the temples uh, to hear you? Well, again, uh, everybody's a natural Taoist. The thing is, we just look at things from different sides. The equations. I'm saying that I just saw someone's uh, asked the questions about how we differentiate, how we communicate each other from different religion. So religion is a man-made, Tao concept is man-made. Every idol of religions are man-made. So the Tao that can be taught is not eternal Tao. Name can be name, it's not eternal name. How we associate a principle of nature, you can name it Tao, you can name it Buddha, we can name it as Jesus. Uh, so however we name it, it's just the way how we explain the way the, the, of nature. So when we do the Taoism, we talk about the way of humanity. It's all about through the angle that we talk about the virtue. Because you understand the philosophy of the Tao, the concept, certain concept of the Tao, each one recognize Tao in different, different angle. When you look at different angle, as long as you follow the truth, you walk the path, you're always reaching to that perspective. Everybody yeah. Understand the way. So barber cutting hair is a barber's Tao. You know, you you 
any mechanic of a uh, uh, vehicle is the master mechanic. So the how does Barbara uh, involve Dao in his work? Just give give a little detail there. <laughs> not everyone is a Taoist. Not every Barbara is a Taoist. How right. how does so a Taoist say, Barbara, Barbara work? The way that you understand the way to do it, for example, the barber understand this person's personality, sensing this person's client's spirit and the preference and follow the physical structure naturally fit into this person's character, the spirits, the souls, the, 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 uh, the outlook request. So it's exactly making somebody the way how they look it. Otherwise, uh, the, the, our president will not park his Air Force One on the wrong way to have somebody to get a cut, right? So must be a somebody has a very unique skill to be what we call a master skill. In Taoism, we call shi fu. It's not a master. So uh, again, so we, we, want, to, takes we a want to communicate with different religions. Basically, is the saying that your religion and my religion all actually eventually all wind up in the same place. As long as you follow your way, that it works for you, the way that I can articulate your body, mind, and spirit, the, uh, the way that you can follow your living principle to achieve the happy and joy, then we are all in the same place. Then we are all Taoist. Well, that's uh, definitely hope so. Uh, in harmony with nature, because we have a lot of challenges in our modern world right now, uh, not in harmony with nature, when we are not in harmony with nature. So wonderful. Right. Um, Dr. Jakowicz, uh, um, you mentioned that, um, yeah, you, you are a practitioner of uh, East Asian medicine, and then you mentioned the injuries you use the uh, Chinese medicine and so on. Uh, would you, Tell us also that why you didn't go to the Western doctor, your family doctor and others to fix you, to help you heal. Why did you fall into the Chinese or the East Asian medicine? Well, um, Don, I did. I did. I have four titanium steel screws in my knee. That's how I can walk. But <laughs> here's the thing. Western medicine is wonderful. It's great. But it has certain strengths. If you need a, you know, if you need to have a, put, a bone put in a cast, that's great. If you need a certain medicine because your body can't secrete a certain hormone, that's great. However, the question is, in Western medicine, their strongest suits, their strongest talents lie in the treatment of something that's most extreme. Brain surgery is amazing. It's amazing. There's so many amazing things that Western medicine can do. However, the day-to-day -day stuff, right? That's the stuff where East Asian medicine shines. So my knee, despite having four titanium steel screws, I had it treated extensively with East Asian medicine. And I can do things that people who have the same knee repair can't do because that's the regular maintenance on the car. That's the change in the oil, rotating the tires. That's taking care of the, the, the mechanism regularly as opposed to collision repair. So, I often say to patients, I go, you know, people put a lot more attention to their cars than they do their bodies. And if you let the engine seize on your car because you don't change the oil, everyone laughs at you and says you're a fool. However, if you eat Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast, Burger King for lunch, McDonald's for dinner, and you go along and you drop dead from a heart attack when you're 40, everyone says, well, that's so sad. That's so sad. Well, you didn't change oil. You didn't rotate the tires. So... I've used both and regularly use both. I have no, I'm no enemy to Western medicine. However, they have a strong suit. We have a strong suit. Our strong suit is the chronic care and can often avoid the need for surgery, avoid the need for you know, serious pharmaceuticals. And so that's what we call integrative medicine, right? Zhong Shi Hui, the unified medicine. So I actually am working with um, a doctor at uh, Will Cornell Medical Center. Um, working on uh, research on head and neck cancer to work with herbal formulas that can be tested, proved, worked with for the side effects of the radiation and the chemo. So there at the cutting edge universities, they're, they're open to this idea 
that there's more than just what they can see. So in that sense, I, I look at it and I teach the students I've always worked with, we're not at war with another doctor, we're at war with disease. Mm -hmm. So if they work with us, well, they're brothers in arms. We all can follow the Tao. And as Master Chen said, it all points kind of the same way. It just may go up a different side of the mountain. So I also, there's one question someone threw in the chat. Don't it be okay if I answer the chat question just briefly? Is that all right? So first someone put up that they're a clinical social worker and Eastern concept with clients who are in other religions. So two things. One, I would say there's a great book from Three Pines Press called Living Authentically, which is about Taoist contributions to psychotherapy. And I was lucky enough about 14, 15 years ago to go speak at the American Psychological Association's conference with their first panel on Taoism in DC. Uh, there's a lot that can be brought from the Taoist perspective into clinical psychology. That's a great book to take a look at, living authentically. Okay? Um, but also, when we look at this, the question is, Taoist religion has religious and religious practices, which often means ritualized practice. That's one thing. Taoist ideas, Taoist philosophy or ideology, that has parallel across the board. And actually, historically, here's why I'm, that PhD after my name means I like to keep talking, but I'll keep it short. <laughs> when, when, when Nestorian Christianity came into China in the Tang Dynasty, Jesus was, and his teachings were considered a type of Taoism because he talked about a, a fundamental idea. When, when asked by the, the emperor's advisors, what is your philosophy? They said, God is love. And the advisors say, they're a type of Taoism. Because in Taoist thought, qi, the thing that links the universe together, is ultimately love. So they were accorded money to build temples, but they were considered a type of Taoism. And Jesus, in the Tang Dynasty, started showing up on Taoist temples. So there is a book called The Chinese Face of Jesus Christ, which is about this understanding. So there's no war between those religious ideas and the idea of, as Master Chen said, being a good person, finding your path. My teacher said to me, it all boils down to be here, avoid the negative, doi jump, face the positive. And if you can do that, I guess you're a Taoist, right? So those principles I think are universal religious principles. And if there's techniques or ideas from Taoism that can help someone in the clinical social work or psychology, they're not bound by sectarian divine. You That's mentioned, be, oh, you mentioned oh, qi. The qi is an essential concept uh, in Chinese medicine and Taoism. Yeah. Would you elaborate on um, what qi is? I have no idea. I have <laughs> no idea. I've been studying. I've been looking at this stuff since I was eight years old and started doing martial arts, and I have no idea. And I mean that jokingly and seriously. There's a great book called The Brief History of Qi by... by uh, um, Ken Rose and Zhang Yuhuan, and that book is 400 pages. That's a brief history of Qi. It's a whole book about one word. So Matthew's Chinese English Dictionary defines Qi, that's a big book that we use to, to, to do it, defines Qi as, with 136 definitions, none of them use the word energy. So there's not historical precedent to use the word energy in a pre-Einsteinian universe. Einstein changed that meaning of that word. So what's Qi? No idea. But if I got to say something, I, you know, the, just like in the um, Lao Tzu Ching Ching Jing, it says, forced to name it, I do not know. Was it, what, ask what it is, I do not know. Forced to name it, I call it Tao. I don't know what Qi is in the sense of it's not a material. It's not a thing. It's an understanding, and it's the way we understand the world. There's actually multiple characters to write it historically. One character means rice in a pot. That's the one you had on the screen just a moment ago. Another character for Qi is the word Wu, limitless, over Huo, fire, yeah. limitless fire, which means the fire that burns in the sun and the heart of every man and everything that makes transformation. This is a massive concept. In many ways, academically, we describe it with the Latin term materia mundi, the very structure of the world, with an idea that all is made of different densities of a singular material. So this is a deep, deep, deep concept that we could spend days talking about. For a doctor, we say, okay, and we accept it. Much like your regular medical doctor accepts atoms, molecules, compounds, but does not think of the chemistry when they select the medicine. They think of the functional result. So in the practice of East Asian medicine, 
we say, yeah, there's chi. We often define it for our students as predictable relationship. And that's it. There is a predictable relationship if I manipulate one part of the body, give an acupuncture point or meridian, that a certain expected result comes. If I use a certain herb, ginseng or sanqi or, or bai shao or one of these herbs, right, these different herbs, predictably, it forms a result. Not always, but predictably, like people act predictably, but not always the same. We have expectation that the herbs will do certain things. That's chi. We say that's the chi of the herb. That's its force, its tendency, its relationship. But yeah. all things only exist in relationship for yin only ex exists in concert of yang. So I, I kind of dodged your question, but I hope I answered it in a way that's Thank true. you, I'd like to hear from Master Chan, who is a, a wooden martial artist and a, a priest. Thank you. But the, uh, in other, we, as a Taoist priest, we have the other angle to look at it, the, the qi. So usually English will translate qi is like life force. Of course, there is a force between uh, heaven and earth. That's what gives the, the creation of 10,000 things. The, the qi is a natural uh, uh, force it's in the universe. And we at the other angle, we say qi is like a kind of character of the Tao. Tao shows as a chi, but a chi shows in human bodies called virtue. And so that the chi shows in anything, it shows in different character. With the chi, apple grows and the apples form. With the chi that we live happier, without the chi, we look sicker. So the force universe has good chi, now we have more prosper in the universe when we lose the chi the universe lost the harmony and balance. So in the, as a Taoist, we look at the chi. When you have a good chi, now you have good life force around you, you look healthy, you look spiritual, you look energetic, you live powerful. Uh, when you lose the chi, bad luck come to you, unhealthy happens, so people get aging and die easy. So in the, as a martial artist, we, accumulating chi, upgrade, harvest chi, upgrade the chi, then using mind to conduct the chi to output as an external force. The external force can penetrating subject without being seen. So it's like the chi, I usually, when I teach in class, obviously use my very limited English, often say, you know, it's like a high pressure cooker. When you enclose it, you know, heat rise up, the high pressure cooker able to break down the grain inside it. As you don't see the, the chi, the chi you cannot be seen, but chi has a power, that has a power. So chi is the basic medicine for, the, for Taoist medicine practice and Chinese medicine practice. So the difference between the East and West is about chi. Yeah, I'm so fascinated by- uh, And then we- uh, this is the, the three treasures of a human person, like the jing, which is the body, qi is the qi, the substance, so, but you can see, you can feel, and then shen, which is the spirit. In English, you will have body, mind, spirit, but in Chinese, it's body, qi, spirit. So the qi seems to serve as the bridge between the physical and uh, the spiritual. And so the, oh yeah, the chart there shows uh, um, the chi as the, um, as the middle bridge over there. And then chi is such, we have chi gong to cultivate chi. We have word, the word chi in Chinese, Chinese language in many different places, as you said. So uh, it is, uh, you mentioned Master Chen, you mentioned earlier, that uh, the little cosmos, we are little cosmos and there's a huge cosmos. And the chi, I assume, connects that and uh, not just chi itself, but uh, other things. 
in Chinese medicine, we, we talk about the qi is the energy flows between the heaven and earth. So heaven and earth in the body is same. Up this is heaven, bottom is the earth. Heaven and earth, how they flow. So the energy has xiao zhou tian and da zhou tian. They've been translated to macrocosmic orbit and microcosmic orbit. How the qi flowed. Qi flow in the du channel. Uh, governing channel flows up in the head and enter in the brain and able to nurture our spirit. So qi is like basically nutrient for our soul, for our spirit. But the raw material is called jing, the essence of body. How the essence body transform into the qi through the, some practice as well. How the qi nurture our soul is also another practice as well. So all the Taoist medicines be, all uh, has a concept called lay down practice, all based on the qi. So our health is based on qi. So, uh, uh, David, would you bring up the slide that says Chinese medicine, the meridians, and that's what the Master Chen. Can I jump in on this a little bit? Oh. Can yeah. I jump in on this a little bit? Yes, go okay. ahead. So, so I think we have to draw a distinction between medicine and Taoist thought, because qi in medicine, if we're talking about East Asian medicine is much more of a restricted and somewhat harnessed idea. Because um, while Master Chen, because of his background and his Taoist uh, religious background, would talk about the qi as it connects heaven into humanity. In the practice of, of East Asian medicine, that's not really what we talk about. We talk about qi in a more mechanistic format. We talk about the, the heart, the lung, the fundamental zhang and fu, the organs, which are really systems. So we talk about the heart, but we often mean the cardiac system. We talk about the liver, but we mean the endocrine system. We're talking about very, very, in the medical side of it, very grounded physical dynamics. And we often define qi in teaching East Asian medicine uh, as an aspect of syllogistic thought of the metabolism. So the metabolism has to be drawn into syllogisms. Syllogisms being very complex concepts reduced into simple, fast, real-time manipulable ideas. That's like the five phases. Those are, that's a syllogism. So the syllogisms would be like in Western medicine, the immune system. You cannot touch your immune system. You can't, it's made of many, 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 many interactive dynamics occurring simultaneously. But it's a concept we use. And you say, oh yeah, his immune system's weak. Well, that's a thousand different cascades of interaction that one would say is weak. But we use it as a concept. So is qi in medicine. So we observe certain dynamics. For example, in the meridians that are used in acupuncture, those are areas where the electrical conductivity is different because on those areas, on these things, that's why we don't really use the word energy so much anymore in the elite teaching of this in the doctoral levels. We talked about metabolism, we talk about metabolic dynamics so that when we look at these meridians, they are areas of decreased resistance, AKA increased electrical conductivity as points are also increased electrical conductivity. So understanding that the body is a saline solution and that electrochemical charge will peripheralize to the surface of saline. We understand these as being more so the electrical chemical signatures of the organs on the surface. And when stimulated with a metal needle or stimulated in certain formats, we're forming an electrochemical biofeedback loop to change organic function. And then Master Chen mentioned the microcosmic and macrocosmic orbit. And the research of Dr. Tom Combs, who's very famous in the, in the field, he's a, 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 a Taoist priest as well as a osteopath. He talks about Batson's plexus, the non-valvular venous structure that surrounds the spine, being the pathway that you see in the microcosmic orbit. And that accounts for much of what we see in Nedan practice for the health benefits is the opening of Batson's plexus which is a major way, it was originally discovered by Dr. Batson in the 1800s about cancer research. So all I'm saying is that in the medical side, we look at this from a lens that brings in the Western science, because as Aldous Huxley famously said, a science sufficiently sophisticated would look like magic to the uninitiated. And East Asian medicine looks like magic unless you have deep enough science to understand it. And then you understand- You have a medical works. chart that I, uh, a picture that I like uh, us to see. Uh, that's a map of brain response. Uh, to yes, if you could pull up that one, that one, if you could pull that one, we could show 
uh, that's uh, the MRI study from the um, uh, Acupuncture Research Society. So David, I don't know if you could pull that slide up, the one with all the brain scans. That's a six, slide six. So here, this one shows different responses that are observable by MRIs of the brain. And you can see here that different points, perfectly point stimulated points, points that are on the leg, on the arm, you know, these different areas. Because like it says uh, in the second um, uh, bullet point there, the vision related points go about a 37, which is on the outside of the lower leg and urinary bladder 60, which is down by the heel. They show deactivation in visual areas of the cuneus. These are brain scans showing the stimulation of points. That's what all those numbers are. Do 15, KI3s, kidney three. These are acupuncture points. When stimulated, they result in neuro, uh, you know, neurological dynamics occurring in the brain. So from the medical side of it, we look at this in a very body-driven way, not to discount the Taoist more esoteric component, but rather to say, in the medical side, we are looking at very observable phenomena not abstract things. We can observe predictable change. And that's, that's the dynamic, what we call empirical medicine and functional medicine. And that's why now East Asian medicine is moving into things like the VA. The US Army has an army operational specialty for acupuncturists. Mm -hmm. The army is not a very, it's a conservative mechanism. And they are, rep, they are reflecting this. And there's something called battlefield acupuncture that they train the medics to do on the battlefield for wounded soldiers because it can eliminate pain or reduce pain. So when they get to the mobile surgical hospitals, they don't have to wait for the painkillers to wear off before they do surgery. So all I'm driving at is that when we talk of chi or these energies, in medicine, it's not so abstract. It's very actionable. You also have another slide about East Asian medicine. We'd like to, the four pillars, it'd be great yeah. to uh, share with us. Yes, that'd be great if you pull four. So once that pops up, we'll talk about it. But the four pillars is a way we understand East Asian medicine as having four major parts. We call them pillars as if they are pillars that hold up a, a, a tabletop or hold up a roof. And those are the pillars. One is acupuncture and moxibustion. Okay, acupuncture is used to tools. Um, ironically, not all the tools of acupuncture go through the skin. Some push the skin, some pull the skin, but they're tools. Moxibustion being the burning of Artemisia vulgaris, the common mugwort plant on the skin to change the skin. Research done at major university has shown that it's uh, from a level, uh, this is the five phases, that's not this slide, um, shows that it's actually a type of- uh, Slide four. That, uh, that moxibustion works by a level of histotoxicity, yeah. uh, stimulating the secretion of histamine. But that's one approach. Another approach in, in, in East Asian medicine is herbs and diet. Um, herbs being, Specialized plants, and, and most people don't realize 60% of all pharmaceuticals are derived originally in their chemical signature from plant structure. So that's another pillar. Yeah, maybe it's fine. We don't have to have the slide. It's just, um, we don't, yeah. we don't, it, it's fine if we don't have the slide. Um, but the thing is, herbs and diet, another pillar of East Asian medicine, and herbs being medicine. Many people, lay people, don't realize that herbs are medicines, and herbs are as toxic as pharmaceuticals if taken incorrectly. And they have to be carefully educated by a trained professional because that's where, you know, dose makes poison. And because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. The strychnine is also natural. Um, then here we go. So, so acupuncture, moxibustion, herbs and diet, physical manipulation, which means bone setting, poina, on more, other types of massage, physical work, that's why there's not really chiropractic in most of East Asia because traditional bone setting realigns the structures. And then finally, breathing exercises, which we now in the modern day call qigong. That's a modern word to describe ancient practices. But those four pillars are part of East Asian medicine. And we see those have a different, in each one of them, a different definition of qi. Because in acupuncture and moxibustion, qi is the surface to interior relationship that you had before with the meridians. In herbs and diet, qi is change over time. So we talk of certain herbs being salty. They don't taste salty, but like salt, which will accumulate fluid, they will accumulate fluid and have an effect on the body's fluids. Uh, so herbs and diet have, have flavors, that's the qi. Then physical manipulation, where qi is gait and posture, how you stand, how you move. And finally, 
and breathing practices. When we come back to Taoism, Qi is the relationship of the individual to the whole of the universe. And that's where Master Chen was talking about that connection between heaven and individual. When in medicine, we have very specific definitions because we want specific results. Thank you very much. I think we we don't have much time right now. I have one final question. Okay, Master Chen mentioned that we're all natural Taoists. How do we, Taoism is so complicated and all these uh, medicine and uh, ways of Taoist uh, approaches seem complicated, right? So how do I as ordinary person start the Taoist way or approach in my daily life? Oh, thank you for that question. I think to answer that question is be alone as well. So make it very simple to speak. I appreciate that doctors uh, have a great uh, Westerns and scientists and medical knowledge and scientific way to explain our mysticism of in Taoism. So as a Taoist priest, you know, I'm I'm more to be more focused on mysticism practice. <laughs> So into the understand different way to understand how the qi work, what is qi, how the qi help improve the health, how to use the qi to cultivating the spirit for extension, such as the, the picture behind me on, the, on my wall, that's called Lei Jing Tu. Uh, so it's a way that we use the, the, the Taoism way using Four different level, Lian Jing Hua Qi, uh, transmuting Jing to Qi, Qi to Shen, Shen to the uh, Void, Void, merge Void into the Tao. So we have four different ways of internal alchemy. But this kind of practice is more based on the mysticism. For uh, someone in the Western, it does need a very important need, someone like, like, like us here to explain in a scientific way to validate the Qi, to validate the concept of the Tao. I mean, nowadays I've been in this country for over 32 years. I've been seeing that uh, a lot of people are easy to become a philosopher or psychologist. It is difficult to be a Taoist. And yet Taoist is extremely simple because we are a natural Taoist because our lifestyle, our desire, the grief for materialism have mutating our original soul that had carried our ancient wisdom in our DNA and our soul. So that's why it make us a little bit further distance away from the truth. So when we have truth, when we left far away from the truth, we of course, it become very difficult to understand what is the Taoism, but Taoism, Tao is true, is the way, is principle. For ordinary people to get in touch with your own innocent spirit by cultivating the stillness and accumulating internal life force, the chi. Once you practice this, you'll probably get a little bit, a little bit conditionalizing your body, mind, and spirit to work on the path of the Tao. So that way you can more appreciate the nature, appreciate the energy of Qi, then you can understand what Qi, how the Qi work for you. At that time you can say, oh, I am become a Taoist again. <laughs> and first, we are never leave us, my teacher. The people are riding on a donkey and search for donkey. So same we are, you know, Qi is always there, but we're always searching for Qi. So for ordinary people who want to practice the, the Taoism, yeah, practice Qi to begin with and cultivating the quality of stillness by learning to find our own consciousness and practice stillness through meditation, practice energy methods through Tai Chi and Qigong and so on and so forth. Time is very limited. I will not speak. I'm not a very good speaker as well. So <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of simple. Thanks for advice there. Steve, two minutes. So great, 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 great stuff, Master Chen. Love that. It's wonderful. And he's talking about the connection to the universe. Again, medicine is very practical. So the best I can do to answer that question is to actually, from memory, quote what's known as the Huang Di Jing, the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine where the great yellow emperor asked his advisor, Chi Po, and he said, why in the ancient days did people live to 100 and they were vibrant and healthy? And he goes, now, 
But now we degrade by 50 and our teeth fall out. And we, we, we have all these diseases. And he's right. And this is written. This book is historically we, have, we, we say this book is from uh, over 3000 years ago. Right. Why is it like this? He's asking the same question we have now. And the advisor says, he says, well, this is very simple. He goes, people take night as day and day as night. They take wine as water. They go and have relations drunk and wind up with all sorts of sexual diseases. They don't comport themselves in keeping with the seasons nor with the Tao. Such they degrade by 50 and lament, why has nature turned against me? Well, that's the way you could be in contact with it from a medical perspective. Abide the laws of day and night. Watch what you drink and eat. Watch and regulate all your practices to all the things you do to keep them in balance and harmony. And that, then accord um, with the seasons, and then you could be healthy and stay at least with the medical Tao and have enough longevity to pursue the things that Master Chen teaches. <laughs> Thank you both very much. Uh, we have uh, two minutes left. I think we answered all the questions um, in the Q&A. So we can... We, uh, we started a few minutes after the hour, so uh, we could probably squeeze in a few minutes. You know, I, I, I was curious... Could we just use some of our final, because um, this this chart was very intriguing to me. Uh, perhaps uh, we could just speak to that. From a, from a medical perspective, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Basically, every organ in the body goes through a period of biorhythmic ascendancy where it's most active and a period on the opposite side of the time clock where it's at its nadir, it's most resting. And it goes through up and down, and this chart makes a circle out of it. You could also see this as concurrent sine waves moving in metabolic activity with a rhythm through the body. That's the medical side of it. So if you had a health problem at a given time every day, we would say, oh, that may be related to one of these organs, either the one that's in the time block or the one on the opposite side or the one before or the one after. It gives us a key to go after that. Now, Master Chen may have much more a spiritual dynamics, because every organ in the body is considered also to be related to your mind and to your spirit. That's the medical view of it, that it's a series of biorhythms and how we can interact with that. And again, just to make an overture to Western medicine, people may not realize 4 a.m. is when your body secretes the most testosterone and 4 p.m. the most cortisone. And those two hormones regulate back and forth. So even in Western medicine, biorhythmic dynamics are occurring and are recognized. Interesting. Master Chen? Because my, if my opinion would say, this is like the, the time clock of the universe. So we have a Qi timing clock. Qi has 12 hours timing. Every two hours, Qi flows in a certain meridian and energy is imitating the whole universal energy. This is called the 24 hour nourishing life by using 12 different timing to imitating the nature flow. And we using certain this timing to cultivating internal alchemy practice, also muscle art practice, and the, all the Taoist medicines also follows such a time club of energy flow, we call qi club. Excellent. I guess uh, you've all noticed that uh, seven to nine, what is that, uh, what that stomach channel? is uh, more activated at that time. That's the time for breakfast. All right, thank you both so much. Yeah. And uh, so David, do you think we have uh, a few minutes for exercise, for Qigong exercise, something simple? Sure, yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay, I think we've answered all the questions. So <laughs> let's uh, stand up. Let me get, uh, change the background a little. Okay, so we are going to have a couple minutes of experiential Taoism. So we've been talking about qi and uh, this question how we get to qi. And we can use this few minutes to uh, do very simple exercise. Okay, stand up and shoulder width. Legs, shoulder width, and relax the body and uh, soften up the body. 
and just to open up to the sky. We will start with warming up a little bit and just open up to the sky, soft and gentle and slow. Looking at the sky, because we are between heaven and earth, earth and sky. Opening up to the sky and uh, opening up to the mountains and rivers, just opening up to start, opening up. All right, and to earth, to earth. And we stand like a thousand year old tree, centered, straight, and uh, rooted. Imagine we have roots underneath and then we can start breathing. Inhale, exhale. Okay, do you start to feel the chi in your palms? Inhale, exhale all the way exhaling into the earth and all the way gathering the earth energy up from the belly to the chest to the neck and uh, exhale again. Okay, finally, let's uh, do a harmonizing movement, gathering earth energy and the sky energy and uh, harmonizing yin and yang. Slowly harmonizing yin and yang. When, uh, I think we can stop over here. Uh, so after we finish, always uh, close. We close just a, uh, be quiet, be still. As Master Chen said, stillness is important. So let's be still for a few seconds. All right, thank you. That is a very basic warm up. So Qigong, we have Ba Duan Jing, have different kinds of Qigong, probably thousand over types of Qigong, and Tai Chi and many forms as well, but that's just a little taste. Uh, you notice we connect with heaven and earth and uh, yin and yang, and we become uh, centered and uh, balanced. Okay, that's it. At least we have more time, we can go for more, but it's 7.05. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you to everybody for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you to Don Lee, uh, Master Cheng, uh, Dr. Jakowitz. Um, this program was recorded and will be on the Chinese American Museum YouTube channel in about a week. All registrants will receive a link uh, and also links to our panelists' information. And I think we'll also uh, send a link to these uh, PowerPoint slides because we didn't use them all and I had trouble finding one of them. Um, but we really appreciate the time that you took to join our program. And uh, please consider supporting the museum so that we can continue to develop uh, the museum itself and also bring you free admission and access to programs like this. Uh, you can learn more about our museum at ChineseAmericanMuseum.org. And, uh, you know, why don't we close out uh, uh, by the three of you telling us uh, just a little bit, maybe we'll plug some of the things that you're working on or uh, provide a website or uh, talk about any books that you have out. Don, you're muted. What did you say? I'm sorry. Master Chen, would you start? Oh, hi. Thank you very much. Um, you can find me. I'm, I'm always, I'm a Taoist. I'm always trying to promoting the, the Taoist healing art in the West. And my, pro my project is to continue work forward to creating a wonderful Taoist uh, Grand Harmony village to getters and like minds people to live a new way of life through cultivation and sustainable renewable life. So through the, to preventing disease and as a goal, uh, cure the disease 10 year ahead 
It's not that and try to cure disease. So a new lifestyle, that's what my goal is try to promote in Taoist healing art. Thank you very much. Steve? Um, so a lot of the things that I've written in such a very academic and kind of dry, put you to sleep. Um, however, years ago, I did a book, uh, I've contributed to a book that Livia Cohn did, which is uh, Health, Life, and Longevity, the Chinese way. And that's about Chinese medicine. I did chapter four and chapter 11. She did the rest of it. So that's a good way to look at it. Health, life, and longevity. It's from Three Pines Press. So if you want, that would be a good one. It's, it's accessible to the common reader. I've also just finished some work with uh, Jonathan Bluestein. Uh, and we have a book that's going to come out the end of this year called Can Chinese Medicine he Heal You? And it's a, lay, it's a general interest book as opposed to a very technical one. So you'd have to look for that, hopefully coming out in September. Okay, hey, we'll put, we'll I, put information about that in the in the email to all the registrants. Terrific. And thank and Don, you so much. How about for, you? For, you know. Well, two things I share. First is uh, I teach Qigong and Tai Chi, and uh, I've organized, helped organize the first World Tai Chi and Qigong Day at Workhouse Arts Center in Lawton, Virginia. And we're joining the 80-some nations, countries uh, in the world to do Tai Chi at 10 a.m. and that's April 29th. April 29th is a World Tai Chi and Qigong Day. So if you live close to Lawton or Mason Lake, come join us. But there are a lot of other uh, groups and schools that uh, host the event as well. So the second thing I'd like to share, or the last thing I'd like to share is I'm working on a book, not research book, but a novel. Dao awakening about based on my personal experience of awakening to Dao to Qi, how I came into Dao in my 20s. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a novel, so it's not just about me. It's going to be about um, probably a generation of for young people seeking um, truth and seeking a better living through a philosophy and through a tradition that has been practiced for thousands of years. So hopefully next year I have a new book. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And um, um, we, uh, I think uh, we really got a lot of good, good feedback. Uh, there were a lot of comments, not as many questions, but uh, uh, I think that uh, it, was, it was really nice having you guys. Thank right. you so much. And Don, right. thank, thank you for you. organizing this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Master Chen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. Very honored to meet you all. Thank you.